All right, guys, so we've been talking about different types of graphs in math for the last couple of weeks. And we've talked about a tally chart, a picture graph, a bar graph, and a line plot. And remember that a graph is just a representation of data, right? It's something visual that we can see patterns and trends and things that we wouldn't be able to see if all of the pieces of data were all separate. And remember that data is a, just a piece of information, right? A piece of information that we've gotten from a survey or another source. All right, so you may have noticed that the line plot is by itself, it's kind of outlined in blue. And that's because if you remember, a line plot is a little bit different from a tally chart, picture graph, and bar graph because it has to involve data that shows um, data in numbers, right? Because the line plot is going to show a number line like we're going to see in a little bit. So we'll come back to that. We're gonna start with the tally chart up here. So the way that I can put data on a tally chart is I can take a survey, right? So I can say, what is your favorite recess toy? So I'm gonna start writing down the recess toys that some people come up with like jump rope, uh, chalk, basketball, and wall ball. Okay, those are the those are the different recess toys that we're that I'm gonna interview people about. And I'm gonna say which one is your favorite. And in my survey, I'm going to every time that somebody um, says, "Okay, yeah, jump rope is my favorite recess toy," I'm going to put a tally. Okay, so I'm gonna interview all these people. I'm gonna give them the survey, and maybe these are my results so far. Oh, lots of people are liking the jump rope in my survey. Okay. Oh, we've got some for. Oh gosh, Miss Hargrove, I did my slash before I did my fourth tally. Okay, so maybe this is what we've gotten so far, all right, in our survey. So I can see from the tally chart, I can see that jump rope has the most tallies and chalk has the least tallies. Okay, that may or may not be um, true for everybody, but in my survey with the people that I interviewed, that is um, what results that I've gotten. Okay, so I can put this in a picture graph, right? I can say, all right, so I may have the toy be the title here, and here is the number of people. Number of people. And remember, a picture graph is going to show pictures, right? So I've got, I'm just gonna abbreviate these. Jump rope, chalk, basketball, wall ball. All right, so for jump rope, I'm just gonna draw my little pictures. I'm just gonna draw a jump rope that looks like that. So I'm gonna draw how many jump ropes? How many jump ropes do I do? Well, I'm gonna look at my tally chart and I see five, six. So I'm going to draw a total of six jump ropes. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And it's also important to note that on a picture graph, I have to think about what my key is, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make a key and put it at the bottom. So my key is that one picture equals one person, right? It's not gonna equal two people or three people um, to make my graph a little bit simpler if I had like a ton of people. Like if I had 100 people, I may need my pictures to represent 10 people or five people just depending on how many people I'm surveying. But in this case, I didn't survey that many, so I should be fine. All right, so let's go to chalk. There's only one person who chose chalk, so I'm gonna just draw my little piece of chalk right here. Right, so there's my piece of chalk representing one person. Basketball, I can see from my tally chart that there were five people who chose basketball. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five basketballs and just gonna do, oh, Miss Hargrove, wrong type of ball. Here we go, we'll go do them like that. Here we go, kind of look like beach balls. It's okay, doesn't have to be perfect. And then we have wall balls. So I'm just going to draw two wall balls because that's what my tally chart shows and I'm just gonna color them in to show that they're different from the basketballs. So it's important in a picture graph that all of your pictures look different so that you can see what they're trying to represent. And I can look at this picture graph and see what? What can I tell from this picture graph so far? Well, I can tell similarly to what I saw on the tally chart, I can see jump rope has the most and I can see chalk has the least, right? I can see also that I would need one more person to like basketball in order for these two to be even, jump rope and basketball. So you can just see things a little bit differently when it's a picture graph. All right, our next representation is a bar graph. So a bar graph um, can also show similar to what a tally chart and a picture graph can show. 
And I'm going to just do a little um, labeling down here. We're going to call this jump rope. Jump rope. This bar will be shot. Nothing really super small. Shot. This will be So, I have my, um, what these bars are going to be representing down here at the bottom of my bar graph. Remember on here, on this side, my label is going to be what? What do you think my label is going to be? It's going to be the number of people, right? So, I've got a label over here, number of people, okay? And then I also need to decide what I'm going to count by. Well, thinking about the highest bar, the highest bar is going to have is going to be jump rope, right? Or it should be once I make it. Um, and I need to say, okay, that's six. So would it make sense for me to count by fives on my bar graph on the side? Like say five, 10, 15, 20, 25. No, that doesn't make any sense because um, the highest number I have is six. If the highest number I have was a hundred, I may want to count by tens over here so that I'm not going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, all the way to 100. Right, so choose your scale. Remember, that's called a scale. We want to choose that wisely so that we um, are not having a, a bar graph where all of our bars are only are only this tall because my scale is going from zero to 100 when my highest number is six, right? So I want my highest number on my bar graph to probably be one more than that. So we'll say seven, okay? Or we could say, we can even say 10. Let's say 10. I'm going to draw that right here. So I'm going to say, oh, here we go. I'm going to say 10. And then I'm going to go here would be zero. And the way that I like to do this to make this even is I like to cut it in half first. So that should be five because I know half of 10 is five. And then I can split each half into five like this. One, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, 10. They're not exactly even, but they're close enough, right? So for our bars, I'm going to look and I see on my tally chart, right? I could use the tally chart for this information, or I could use the picture graph that I've already made. But on my tally chart, I see that I have jump rope, um, has six people. So I'm going to find, oops, I did not finish numbering my little bar graphs. So this should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay. So I'm gonna look at my tally chart and I see that six people like jump rope. So I'm going to make my line for my bar right at even with six right here. If you see it's even with that six line. And then I'm gonna go down here. Oops, 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 oops. Click the wrong thing, sorry girl. Um, and I'm going to make my bar, which should be even with the six. Chalk should just be even with the one, so it should be right like this. Basketball should be even with five, so it should go across. I'm gonna use, I'm kinda using my guide to say, okay, I'm gonna go all the way across to do about right there. And then I'll draw my bar, basketball. Okay, and then for wall ball, it's two, so I'm gonna go even with two, and my bar should be about that tall. Okay, so remember when you're reading a bar graph, you can just say, okay, here's the top of my bar. It is even with six, so I know that six people like jump rope. Chalk, I'm gonna go across. Oh, it's even with one, so I know that one person like chalk. Basketball, I'm gonna go across. It's even with five, so I know five people like basketball because remember, all of these numbers represent the number of people. And then wall ball is even with two, so I know that two people liked wall ball. All right, so those are the three representations that are all kind of related, and then a line plot may be a little bit different. So I'm, I'm gonna do a new tally chart for this line plot because tally charts can be used for picture graph and bar graph, or it can be used for line plot. It's just gonna look a little bit different. So I've got points scored and I've got the number of players. So I'm just gonna pick some arbitrary, which just means random. I'm gonna pick some random point values that maybe somebody scored in a basketball game. It could be six points, we're gonna say eight points, 10 points, and 12 points, okay? 
So remember that a line plot involves a number line, okay? We know that number lines, we can either start with zero or we could take a chunk of a number line, kind of like you see on the wall of your classroom where we have, where we can look at, you know, all the numbers between 10 and 20. So in this case, we're gonna look at the numbers between five and 15, just because I know that um, six is, five is right before six and 15 is pretty close after 12. So I'm gonna do a similar strategy for making this number line as I did on the bar graph, and I'm gonna cut it in half first. I know halfway between five and 15 is 10, and then I can say six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's important when you're making a, oh, sorry, those are a little close together. It's important when you're making a line plot to remember that um, you want to do your numbers in order, even though I don't have any set points, um, any people who scored, oh, let me go ahead and finish on my tally chart real quick. So let's say that six people scored six points, three people scored eight points, five people scored 10 points, and one person scored 12 points. So even though nobody scored seven points, I'm still going to include seven on my line plot because this is a number line and I need to include um, the numbers that are between there as well. Okay, so remember I'm gonna use um, X's above each number to demonstrate how many people um, scored that number of points. So over six points, I should have six X's because that's how many people score, I mean, uh, how many players scored that, scored six points, so four, five, six. Over eight, I should have three X's because that's how many people scored eight points. And remember, I'm gonna try to make my X's about the same size so that whenever I'm looking at this, the third X on this one is even with the third X on this one. All right, for 10, we should have five people that scored 10 points. One, two, three, four, five. Again, if I'm looking at this, the fifth X on here should be even with the fifth X on here. And then we had one person who scored 12 points. All right, so I can see from this information that the most, uh, most people scored six points with, or th six points or 10 points, and then there was only one person who scored 12 points, right? So the only thing that I'm missing from my line plot is my, um, is my title and my label below the number. So the numbers are representing the points that it were scored And then my title might be um, the number of players. And I'm just looking at my tally chart to see what that might look like. All right, guys, you got this. You know all these four graphs. We've talked about them and talked about them. So you are good to go for your chapter nine review and taking your test. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good day.